In the previous video, we talked about um, head loss associated with long straight sections of the pipe, and that is called, that is referred to as major losses. And in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, minor losses. And the difference between the two is that with minor losses, you uh, are accounting for uh, head loss through different pipe components. It could be uh, valves, it could be T's, it could be bends, it could be joints. So all of these add to the overall head loss of the system, which is HL. So we're going to be talking about HL minor right now, minor losses. And uh, we're going to look at different methods um, through which you can determine these uh, minor losses that occur for different piping systems. So there's different components that we look at when we're looking at minor loss, and one of those components is uh, called a valve. This shows you a valve. And I'm just showing you an example of the valve right now because whatever the component may be, whether it's a valve or whether it's a T-joint, um, the head loss, the minor head loss associated with it is uh, of a similar um, style, you could say. it's. Uh, based on the similar equations derived experimentally, you could say. So when we're looking at this valve, what is the purpose of this valve? It's, it's basically you're using it to regulate and change the flow rate, right? Because when you're completely closing the valve, you don't really have any flow rate because um, the resistance to the flow is highest. And then when you're opening it, the pattern in here starts to change. Um, so you're opening or closing the valve, and that is altering the flow pattern within the valve. So that means that the head loss in the valve starts changing too. Because what is head loss, really? It is resistance to flow. So the more you open it or the more you close it, the more the head loss is going to be changing as well. So these types of losses are very difficult to account for. There's no uh, theoretical way to account for this. It's not possible yet. So all the head loss information for all of these components that we're going to be looking at, it's just based on experimental data. It's uh, in dimensionless forms you're going to see. And one of the methods that we use to determine minor losses, to determine head losses or pressure drops, is to specify something called a loss coefficient represented by KL. So loss coefficient is just a dimensionless form of head loss. Okay, It just doesn't have any units attached to it, and we call it loss coefficient. And, and you it's given actually in terms of, let's say, the minor head loss. So I'm just going to represent it by uh, subscript M here. It's the same as minor. And divided by V square, which is the velocity, divided by 2G, where G is the gravitational acceleration. Or you could also give this HL in terms of the dimensionless pressure drop quantity, which is delta P divided by dynamic pressure and we've talked about this before as well as half uh, rho v square okay so this is how you represent this head loss uh, coefficient this loss coefficient kl and now if i was to write delta p in terms of the loss coefficient then i would just move this dynamic pressure term onto this side or if i wanted to uh, write let's say, the minor head loss in terms of uh, loss coefficient, it would be equal to KL into V square divided by 2G. And what we see from this equation is that, let's say, if you have a fixed loss coefficient for any pipe component, like a valve, let's say, like a valve here, um, your head loss here is going to be proportional to the square of the velocity. Um, other than this, you could ask that what does K 
KL loss coefficient actually depend on? So it depends on, first of all, obviously, the type of geometry looking at, you're looking at, whether you're looking at a valve or you're looking at a T-joint. Uh, and we're going to talk about that in this video as well. Um, so depending on that, KL is going to change. That means it's dependent on it's dependent on uh, the geometry of the component that you're looking at, and it's obviously dependent on the flow properties as well, the fluid properties. So it's dependent on a Reynolds number too, but for higher Reynolds number, especially when we're talking about turbulent flow, and for much higher Reynolds number, uh, KL loss coefficient just depends on the geometry. So this is one way to determine um, head losses, minor head losses. The second way is that you determine something called an equivalent length, L subscript EQ. And what equivalent length means is that you are looking to find out the head loss that you would have in let's say a straight pipe that would be equivalent to the head loss through let's say this component so you're looking at just re you're just looking at the relative length of a pipe that you would require that would produce the same head loss as this component here and the length of this pipe is going to give you uh, the value for KL basically so how would you do that we were already seen that KL is given in terms of um, well H H uh, L minor head loss minor is given in terms of KL multiplied by V square divided by 2G and now we're saying that we need to find out the equivalent head loss in a straight pipe so in a straight pipe what we saw was and in, in the previous video when we talked about major head losses that the head loss is given in terms of the friction factor multiplied by uh, the lead to diameter ratio multiplied by v squared by 2g and we can just equate these two now because we want to find out the equivalence right so we can just equate these two and this length here now the length of the pipe is going to be the equivalent length and now I can just find out from here what the equivalent length is. And the equivalent length is going to be equal to um, KL because V squared by 2G is going to cancel out. So it's going to be KL multiplied with the diameter of the pipe divided by the friction factor. And that's going to give me the equivalent length. But what we usually do is that we um, are going to look at this first method only um, in this video series and we're gonna be doing that because well in most textbooks you will find that this is the method that they usually go with so I'm just gonna stick to this as well and uh, we're going to be looking to determine minor losses through this loss coefficient method so now that we've talked about um, KL, the loss coefficient, we can go on and talk about different kinds of piping components. And essentially, whatever the piping component is, it's just a change in, let's say, the diameter of, let's say, the flow that is flowing through if let's say this is the pipe where the flow is going to be flowing through here then whatever the component is going to be whether it's a bend whether it's a T joint um, whether it's a valve what is what is essentially happening is a reduction in let's say the diameter here or an expansion here so let's just look at the case where we're looking at the reduction in diameter first and this is just showing you simply uh, what essentially every pipe component is supposed to do. So you could have, let's say, um, 
a system where this reduction takes place when you have this re-entrant region here that is uh, pretty well into the pipe. Okay, So there's going to be a different loss coefficient for this uh, kind of component. So the KL, let's say, for this kind of component is going to be somewhere around um, 0 0.8. Eight, and the higher the loss coefficient is, the higher the head loss is going to be. So what we are trying to do is all the time is to make sure that this loss coefficient is as low as possible. And what you can see is that this is pretty high, actually. It's 0 0.8. So it, it can be a maximum of 1. So it's already at 0 0.8. So that means we need to be doing something about this and trying to change it to make sure that we bring this down because what is happening is that right now when the flow enters into this second component you have a lot of flow separation taking place along the edges of the pipe because obviously you have the vena contracta effect here taking place in the middle so because of that you have flow separation taking place on both sides of the pipe and the higher the flow separation is going to be the higher the loss coefficient is going to be as well. So one way to reduce this is to somehow um, have the second component starting right at the exit of the first component. So that is going to maybe somehow reduce the value of loss coefficient a little bit. This is still, this is called sharp edged, uh, um, let's say sharp edged entrance flow condition here. So the KL over here, loss coefficient over here, is still going to be 0 0.5, but it's an improvement on the loss coefficient that we were looking at over here. And how can we improve this further? Well, we can improve this if we slightly start rounding off the edges here. So if this is going to be rounded off, then the flow separation that is already taking place is reduced even further here. Um, the loss coefficient now for this slightly rounded um, entrance flow condition is going to be let's say it's going to be around 0 0.2 so just by rounding it off slightly we've been able to reduce the loss coefficient um, by a really high value and we can keep on doing this further and further and the more well rounded it is the lower the loss coefficient is going to be. So when it's going to be really well rounded, as you see here, then this loss coefficient is going to come down to even, let's say, 0 0.04 in this case. So this loss coefficient, you're always trying to make sure that it's reduced as much as possible. But um, when you practically see the applications, um, of different pipe components. It's not always dependent on the loss coefficient here. It's also dependent on the cost that it would make, that that, that would it would take to um, fabricate this component, let's say. So you, there's there has to be some kind of give and take here uh, for you to have a low loss coefficient, but at the same time, you have to keep the uh, cost of making these components small as well and let's just go ahead and look at this here so what this shows you here is we're just looking at the same um, thing that we saw previously with sharp edges here that when the flow is coming in from section one uh, a pressure drop is going to take place here and uh, then obviously that pressure drop carries on until the third section 3 here as well and uh, whoa okay hold on let's just sorry about that let's just take a look at this so the, what what this is essentially showing you is that what what is the vena contractor effect it's basically the point within this uh, geometry where the diameter the effective diameter of the stream is the lowest it's the smallest and the fluid velocity 
is at a maximum here, so V2 is greater than V3. And uh, essentially, the flow is separating from the sharp edges. That is, that's why it's called separated flow. The maximum velocity is at section 2 here, and it's greater than uh, at section 3. And the pressure is lower. And if this high-speed fluid over here could slow down efficiently, then this kinetic energy could be converted into pressure and the ideal pressure distribution is shown here um, and the head loss for that kind of entrance would be essentially zero but unfortunately that is not the case because although the fluid may be accelerating really efficiently um, it is really difficult to slow down uh, a fluid efficiently. So that means that the extra kinetic energy that the fluid has at section 2, uh, it's partially lost because of uh, the dissipation that is taking place due to the viscous effects. So because of that, the pressure doesn't return to the ideal um, to, the, to the ideal value and an entrance head loss or the pressure drop is produced as has been shown here and the majority of this loss is because of the inertial effects that are eventually dissipated by the shear stresses within the fluid um, and the net effect of all of this is that the loss coefficient for this kind of uh, square edge to entrance is going to be approximately 0 0.50 that is being shown here that is one half of the velocity head is lost as the fluid enters the pipe so this is 0 0.5 here and this is when it's completely sharp edged here okay and if you have a re-entrant that we looked at if you have a situation where this second pipe is already within the first one then the losses are going to be even higher here but uh, like I said the, the, these losses can be decreased if you go from sharper edges to more bell rounded edges